change and no child left behind. Senator Clinton, thank you. The next set of questions will be coming from Mr. Keith O. of New York, a lightning round, and it's still said with great caution, comes up after this next break. Thank you. Soldier Field in Chicago in time to speed things up for what turns out to be the last 15 minutes. We've been granted an additional five minutes unless anybody has anything they'd rather be doing here. Uh, this is our lightning round, and again, it is a doubtful phrase, but it's still probably better than the alternative suggestion, which was speed dating. As befits the name, please limit your responses to 30 seconds. I will begin with Governor Richardson. What would your job description be for your vice president? My vice president would not be Dick Cheney. In fact, I would not have... My vice president would be a member of the executive branch. What I would also say is that my vice president has to have the ability to step into the presidency. More than any other reason, that would be the reason to select a vice presidential candidate. In fact, I think any of these here in the stage would be an excellent vice president. Governor Richardson, thank you. Continuing the lightning round, Senator Clinton, this past Saturday you defended taking money from lobbyists, and the quote was this, a lot of those lobbyists, whether you like it or not, represent real Americans. They actually do. Why, though, do these lobbyists make more money, by and large, than average Americans? Well, you know, Keith, I believe we've got to have fundamental reform in Washington. I'm in favor of, especially after Bush and Cheney and Roe, to clean up what they're leaving behind, to end the no-bid contracts, the revolving door in government. I think it's absolutely essential that, you know, we get rid of all of the contracting out of government jobs, which has really undermined uh, the quality of services. But, you know, I think it is also the case uh, that I have fought for all of these issues against a lot of special interests for a very long time. I fought the drug companies and the insurance companies in 93 and 94. I caught, fought them again on the Medicare prescription drug benefit. I fought the banks Senator? on bankruptcy return, reform. So I think that uh, my record on standing up and fighting for people really speaks for itself. 30 seconds. Uh, Senator Obama, I know you and Senator Edwards have taken a firm stand against accepting money from lobbyists, yet you allow them to raise money money for you and, uh, as the phrase goes, bundle it. What's the difference between those things? Uh, I do not have uh, federal registered lobbyists bundling for me, just like I don't take PAC money. And the, the reason that's important is because the people in this stadium need to know who we are going to fight for. And I want to be absolutely clear that the reason I'm in public life, the reason I came to Chicago, the reason I started working with unions, the reason I march on picket lines, the reason that I'm running for president is because of you, not because of folks who are writing big checks. And that's a clear message that has to be sent, uh, I think, by every candidate. Senator Obama, thank you for your correction. Senator Edwards, I have a question for you. You made your substantial fortune as a trial lawyer. Trial lawyers are not contributing significantly to your campaign. How is that any better than lobbyists? It's very different because what's happened is the, the lobbyists in Washington, D.C. are the people whose job it is to rig this system against all of you. They do it every single day. They get paid to do it. And the difference, by the way, between them and lawyers is lawyers go into courtrooms doing exactly the same thing, speaking to a jury, but when lawyers give money to the jury who are making the decisions, that's called a bribe. When lobbyists go to members of Congress and give money to them, that's called politics. The question is, are we actually going to bring an end to this? Are we going to stop it? You're being outspent 18 to 1 by big multinational corporates, corporate lobbyists in Washington, D.C. What I believe is America needs change, and I think the Democratic Party, we don't need Senator, lobbyists in Washington, D.C. We need the Democratic Party to stand up for working men and women, and we need a President of the United States who will stand up for working men and women. Thank you, Senator Edwards. Senator Biden. If we are in as in dire shape or anywhere near it internationally in terms of counterterror, would you treat this as a wartime situation? Would you go bipartisan if you were president of the United States? Would you appoint a Republican to run either the Department of Homeland Security or the Pentagon? The answer is I would consider that. The fact of the matter is the next president of the United States can have to bring this country together. We are not blue and red. We cannot be sustained that way. We cannot get health care. We cannot get a foreign policy. We cannot do anything with a 51% solution. Every one of the things we talked about here requires a consensus. And if you don't have the experience that I have and the success I've had reaching across the aisle, what makes you think 
you're going to get a national health care plan? What makes you think you're going to have an education plan? What makes you think you're going to have a rational foreign policy? The answer is I would consider the most competent people I could, and I would try my best to reach across the aisle to reasonable people to unite this country. It needs to be united. Senator Biden, thank you. Senator Dodd, there have been no terrorist attacks on U.S. soil since 9-11. Does that mean that the creation of the Department of Homeland Security was a good idea? Well, no, I don't. Uh, the Department of Homeland Security is far too large, in my view, and of course the efforts to deprive people to be able to organize into that department was one of the great tragedies, in my view, here. People ought to be allowed to organize, collectively bargain, as Department of Employee, Homeland Employees in, in our country here. And certainly I happen to believe that we're not safer today, even though we have not had an attack on our own soil. Tell that to the people in Iraq, tell that to the people in Afghanistan, tell that to the people around the world. Terrorism is a real issue. It's going to require a collective effort on behalf of our nation, working with others to make a difference. Terrorism is a tactic, it's not a philosophy. And it's going to require an inordinate amount of cooperation to solve that. Having the kind of first responders at home, like the firefighters and police and EMS services, that have the tools and the ability to stand up and defend our country, has not been funded. So while we haven't been attacked, I think we're vulnerable today, more so than we were right after 9-11. Senator Dodd, thank you. Congressman Kucinich, we have many members of Congress, and all of you have been there at one point.